speaks Malay and English, as well as Tamil and Mandarin. He's coming to France, since coming to France 11 years ago, he also speaks French quite fluently and is now learning Italian. Although he has always considered himself to be extroverted, he now feels there are days where he's more introverted. I doubt it. <laughs> but that doesn't stop him from taking the limelight every now and then to deliver speeches. For our English prepared speech, with a speech title, Step Out of Your Comfort Zone Under the Persuasive Influence Pathway, we have Hakim Lukman. Hakim Lukman, Step Out of Your Comfort Zone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will be talking about stepping out of your comfort zone. I have been requested to speak in English this evening, but for personal reasons that I will soon enough share with you, I want to start with a bit of French. Sortir de sa zone de confort, c'est justement ce que je fais aujourd'hui. Non pas parce que je suis sur scène à parler devant un public, de ça j'ai l'habitude et je le fais depuis des années. Non, ce soir, je sors de ma zone de confort en faisant cette partie de mon discours en français. Ce n'est que la deuxième fois de ma vie que je le fais. Pourtant, je suis dans un club Toastmasters bilingue depuis 2016. Il ne me manquait pas d'occasion d'en faire des discours en français. C'est juste que je ne me suis pas donné la peine de le faire. Ou que tout simplement, je n'ai pas osé. Mais ce soir, j'ose. Qu'en est-il alors de la première fois Alors là, j'étais bien en dehors de ma zone de confort. J'en étais tellement éloigné que j'étais visiblement mal à l'aise. Voici un petit clip vidéo qui témoigne de mon malaise lors de mon premier discours en français il y a juste deux semaines. Et... Euh... <coughs> That was me speaking French, or at least trying to, in front of an audience two weeks ago. I gave this speech in front of a high at a high school in front of teenage students. Perhaps the worst group of people to lose your nerves in front of. We all know teenagers can be ruthless. But the context of it all makes it even more embarrassing. I was asked to speak by Safa, current president of the Toastmasters of Nice, as part of a youth leadership program. I was expected to be an example of a good speaker. <laughs> that was my performance. Ironically, my speech was about not letting yourself get too stressed out. And there I was, completely stressed out. But to top it all off, when I was introduced as a speaker, the Master of Ceremonies mentioned that I was the former president of the Toastmasters Nice Club. The setup was complete for my humiliation. <laughs> Of course, when the memory was still fresh, it was all very embarrassing, but now it's been two weeks, and so now it's just a funny story that I tell. And I do tell it quite often because, frankly, it's quite hilarious. But in all fairness, after I regained my composure and got through that initial stumbling block, I finally delivered my speech successfully. And yes, although there were parts of my speech that were failures, I consider the overall experience to have been a success. I mean, I stepped out of my comfort zone, and now I'm not as afraid to speak in French in public as you've just seen. Although now I can gladly say that I'm glad to have had this experience, I can honestly say that, I realize as well that it didn't have to be that painful or that embarrassing. Knowing how stressed and nervous I was about speaking in French in public, I should have just prepared myself more thoroughly, made sure to get enough sleep on the nights leading up to my speech, and perhaps most importantly, as Safa was kindly mentioning in that video, I should have remembered to breathe. <laughs> I am by no means looking for excuses for my performance, but I do want to learn from my mistakes and improve. Of course, I'm human and I have an ego, so now you know the personal reason why I had to start with a bit of French today. Ladies and gentlemen, that is just one example of a time I stepped out of my comfort zone and learned from it. 
There have been other instances, and I would like to share two more examples with you this evening. If you have ever found yourself in a position of taking on a role with more responsibility, say a leadership role, perhaps at your workplace or in an organization or a club that you belong to, you might be able to relate to my next example. I found myself in such a position in 2020 when, with the encouragement of my club members, I took on the role of president of the Toastmasters Nice Club. At first, it was difficult, and I thought that maybe I had bitten off more than I could chew. I had doubts about my ability to lead, especially through the lockdowns and the restrictions on gatherings. I thought to myself, I was perfectly fine as a regular member of Toastmasters. Why did I become the president? <laughs> but with the help and support of my club members, I managed to rise to the role. And the routine, as well as the sense of purpose that it gave me, helped give me some stability in that year. And of course, I found it to be an enriching learning experience. I learned to delegate, to coordinate a team, to lead by example, as well as to organize events. And I found that all these skills translate very smoothly into other areas of my life, including work. Now that's not to say that having had this experience of leadership has made me now want to be a leader all the time. No, in fact, it's given me insight into myself. And I know now that I naturally prefer to be a team member rather than a team leader. Nonetheless, I'm glad to have had this experience, not just to have learned more about myself, but also to have these skills in my back pocket, just in case I ever need to use them one day. Ladies and gentlemen, my next, my final example, actually, is about a, a case of being forced out of your comfort zone. One big thing in 2020 was the rise in prominence of Zoom and other teleconferencing software. I'm sure we all spent countless hours connecting with friends, families, and colleagues over, through screens. And so a lot of us might have anecdotes of endless, awkward Zoom calls, especially in the beginning when we're still getting used to it. You're on mute. Or, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Or even worse, I'm so sorry, I thought I was a mute. <laughs> Are all very popular phrases at the beginning. And perhaps we all had difficulty adjusting to having all our meetings of Microsoft Teams or Skype at the beginning of the lockdowns. But now, two years later, companies and institutions all around the world have made the shift towards using teleconferencing. And now teleworking is the norm. For those of you who do telework, I'm sure that, I can imagine at least, that you find it to be quite flexible and that it has given you a better work-life balance. This is a case of where society as a whole was forced out of our comfort zone and we adapted. And now we find ourselves with new comforts. So, ladies and gentlemen, this evening I have stepped out of my comfort zone by speaking a little bit in French, and by sharing with you my latest embarrassment. I've also shared with you an example of where I purposely stepped out of my comfort zone and have learned more about myself and gained skills for it. I've given you as well an example of where we've all been forced out of our comfort zone and we are better for it now. I would just like to remind myself to continue to step out of my comfort zone and to do so boldly and confidently, and I encourage you to do the same. Take the uncomfortable steps necessary to get yourself to where you want to be. Let us not be afraid of change, because change can happen when we least expect it. Let us face change with boldness, and we might surprise ourselves. Of course, give yourself all the chances you need to succeed by preparing thoroughly, and remembering to breathe. I wish you all the best. Thank you.